Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, this is a what if series and I'll be doing more down the world, plus ultra. Hey guys, and welcome to part 5 of what if Naruto had Jiren's powers. So, we left off with a bit of a cliffhanger with Naruto basically telling Shukaku that, well, telling the one tail, I'm gonna say Shukaku because that's easier. Telling Shukaku or telling Gara more likely that you basically just made it more easy for me. You turned big and gave gave yourself a lot of blind spots. So Naruto would be battling against the Shukaku and he would go to unleash a final flash attack. And you would see this purplish black aura emitting from Naruto's body. And he would go on to say, Final Flash! As you see this purple energy wave just engulf the area and Shukaku's body would not be strong enough to sustain the hit so the same thing in canon with Shukaku's body becoming pure like sand and falling to the ground now Naruto and Sasuke and I mean Naruto and Sasuke Naruto and Gara wouldn't have that little scuffle they did when they jumped up and punched each other no Gara would be floating to the, like falling to the ground with he barely any kind of body movement he can't move at all so he would hit the ground with a large thud and Naruto would go to float down and this is where Gar Naruto would give Gara a talk no jutsu. While I admire your strength, you turned all that hatred, all that pain, into power. You are indeed a strong warrior, but your morals, your way of seeing things, is wrong. Killing people just to satisfy your bloodlust, not the path for you. As you can see, my strength was greater than yours, Gara. Gara would go on to tell Naruto in a battered tone, why, how are you so sh strong? And why hasn't the hatred consumed you? From what I see, you're just like me. And Naruto would bat it, look down and say, indeed, my village called me a monster. They called me a demon, ridiculed me, and treated me like dirt. But I studied. I've mastered my power. I've trained as hard as I could day in and day out. I've done nothing but countless workouts. Building my strength, training and mastering my key and my chakra, developing attacks of my own accord, and getting strong, paying attention, following, learning. Making sure there was no error in my strength. I sought out to become the strongest ninja in the Leaf Village. And I fight for justice. I don't care what these people think. At the end of the day, while they keep calling, they, while they were calling me names, I was just getting stronger and stronger. But enough of talking about me. I'll give you this chance, Gara, of the sand, as I do see that what you did here was an attack on the Leaf Village, and sometimes that can be complemented with death, and you don't want that. So I'll give you this chance, Gara of the sand. Become a symbol. Become stronger. Train. Don't let what people say get to you. Instead, become a beacon of light. As Naruto would go to walk away, and he would look back and say, you have the characteristics to become a leader. And Naruto would teleport away from Gara, leaving Gara there to think with Konkuro and Tamari basically coming there and taking Gara away with Gara saying, All right, so you are indeed a strong warrior. Konkuro, Tamari, I'm sorry. And they would bow their head and say, Yeah, no worries. So the Konoha crush thing didn't happen like it did in canon because Naruto was there. Naruto single hand, well, battle with Hiru's himself. He battled against Orochimaru and he took down Gara Shukaku form. Now we basically have a Naruto with two, well, two weeks on his hand, nothing to do. So I'm going to say before they would go to get Tsunade, they have two weeks. So Naruto would use those two weeks to train. 
And it wouldn't be nothing, nothing more than push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, sprints, pull-ups, weightlifting. He also trains with his key, trains with his chakra, because there might be a situation where he might need to use it. And he also trains with Mike Guy a lot. He, but he finds Mike Guy's in energetic attitude or personality a bit annoying, but he's gotten used to it over the years. So... The two weeks are up and Jiraiya would come to get Naruto and ask him to come to the Hokage's office. There they would meet Hiruzen Saratobi, the third Hokage. Hiruzen would go on to say, I'm glad you guys could make it. Now, the reason why I called you and Naruto here is because I'm stepping down from the Hokage position. And Jiraiya would be shocked to hear this, but he knows that Hiruzen is getting old and would comment on why and Naruto would go on to say, well, third Hokage, I get that you're stepping down from your Hokage's position. And indeed, I can see why you're getting old. And the third Hokage would say, he's Naruto, you don't know how to just hold back a little bit. But Naruto would continue his conversations, his sentence and saying, while indeed you're getting too old for the position, why am I here? This seems like it has nothing to do with me. And... Hiruzen would go on to compliment, well, comment saying, This has plenty to do with you, Naruto, as your strength could potentially bring the next Hokage here. Jiraiya would ask Hiruzen if he's talking about Tsunade, and he would say yes, because you're not going to take the job, are you, Jiraiya? And Jiraiya would close his eyes and smile saying, No, old man, the title for Hokage has never been for me. More like a spy or just a messenger. If you get me. And Hiruzen would say, well, you guys have three days, three days at max to go and get Tsunade and bring her back to the villa so she can be the fifth Hokage. Otherwise, if she doesn't come back, then the title could go to someone less worthy. And I think you know who, Jiraiya. And Jiraiya sweats at this thing, Danzo, right? And Hiruzen basically looks at both of them with a serious tone. If Tsunade doesn't become Hokage, then Danzo will. And you know through his malicious intent that he thrives to become Hokage. And we cannot let that happen. Naruto, for the sake of the village, persuade Tsunade to come here and be the Hokage. Otherwise, we have no choice but to let Danzo become the Hokage and the leader of this village. And if that comes to terms, I fear that the leaf wouldn't exist anymore. And Naruto would be saying, and Naruto would say, "Yes, Lord Third." So Naruto and Jiraiya would begin their journey to accompany. Well, no, they begin their journey to go and retrieve Lady Tsunade. On this way, Jiraiya would go on to comment to Naruto, saying, J "Naruto, would you like to learn a new jutsu?" And Naruto would say, "Hmm." I don't think I need to use jutsus as I really don't see them in my combat style. And Jiraiya would, he would hear a lot of news of how strong Naruto is and what he managed to do in his head. Naruto, I mean, Jiraiya would be saying, so this kid took down Orochimaru and the Sand Kid, basically stopping the whole Konoha Crush attack. Hmm. And he's even bested Kakashi in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Kid, what have you been through? What kind of training did you put yourself through? So Jiraiya would go on to show Naruto the Rasengan and Naruto would instantly say, hmm, that attack can be very useful. I can call it Big Bang Rasengan. As Naruto would instantly mix key and chakra in his hand and he would and it would create the Rasengan to Jiraiya's shock and awe that Naruto just mastered this attack with only seeing it just once. Naruto would extend his hand and the Rasengan would grow and grow and grow, possibly surpassing the giant's Rasengan stage, and Naruto would fire off a big bang Rasengan, clearing a whole bunch of tree trees and sending out a huge explosion. And Naruto would say, well, guess I've learned a new move. Well, I, I might have misjudged you, Pervy Sage. And Jiraiya would be scratching his head and saying, I really hope he doesn't kill Tsunade. Minato and Kushina, like, what kind of child did you spawn? 
So the rest of the journey would continue as it did in canon and they would meet Tsunade at a bar. Jiraiya and Naruto would sit down with Tsunade and Shizune and Tsunade would go on to say, Jiraiya, what are you here for? And why are you here with this brat? And Jiraiya would go on to comment saying, well, Tsunade, I'm here because the third Hokage, Hiruzen, is stepping down and we need a new Hokage for the village. You are a clear candidate. Now, would you please come to back to the village because we are in debt and we need your help. And we now come back to the village. The same things happen in canon with Kakashi and them. Well, let's not say that. Let's say this happened. I met, I might have skipped over something very important, so let's do a little flashback. So before Jiraiya and Naruto met Tsunade, Naruto would be in his apartment, and he would just be training and meditating. All of a sudden, he hears a knock at the door. So Naruto would get up, and he would brush himself off at, like, well, basically straighten out his clothes, and he would sense malice behind the door. And Naruto would go on to say, I don't know. He like he senses two individuals there and he would go on to say, listen and listen to me. Well, I don't know who you two are, what your plans are. But if it's a fight you're looking for, then by all means, show me your strength. As Naruto sent out a huge blast that Itachi and Kisame was barely able to dodge. Barely. They just managed to get out of the way as part of the hotel that Naruto was standing. It was gone. And he would uh, like walk out of the room and he would look at Itachi and Kisame. Hmm, what are those robes? Who are you guys? And Itachi would have a sweat on his head saying, but he would regain composure saying, Naruto, you are to come with us. That beast inside you, we want it. And Naruto would come to, and just say in a cocky tone, come get it then. If you manage, I give you guys two minutes at tops and Kisame would say for a brat you're awfully cocky and Naruto would teleport right behind Kisame and sending a thunderous punch to his back sending Kisame flying tumble like through buildings and this is where Naruto would be just, would just be saying there wow that was just one punch I'm not sure me being cocky has anything to do with my strength and Kisame would unsheath Samehara with Itachi basically coming in to battle against Naruto. But Naruto would say, hmm, I told I am very intellective about you, Itachi. You're an undercover spy for the Leaf Village, aren't you? Well, I don't know. I'm saying not saying that out loud. I'm say Naruto said this in Itachi's head. Itachi, stop. And Itachi would stop in place and Naruto would say, why are you attacking me? I am your comrade, aren't I? And Itachi would be confused. We are not comrades. Oh, don't give me that, Itachi. I know what you did. I know the truth. I know everything about you are being a spy for the Leaf Village and them telling you to slaughter your whole clan. I know a lot. As through my childhood, I'm very in intellective. Well, informative. Let's say that. He's very... Because Naruto studied, he did all his knowledge training and all that stuff. And I'm pretty sure here to find out knowledge about Itachi even going deeper into the archives of Konoha. Itachi would be taken aback by this and saying, You only joined this group. I don't know nothing about the robes and everything, but I know you're a spy for the Leaf Village. That much I know. And Itachi would be just basically saying in his head, How are you doing this right now? And Naruto would go to say, well, how, how I'm doing this is not the question. What I'm doing, what I'm saying is, why are you attacking me? He's saying, you're going too far with this spy thing. This has come to an end. I'm going to put an end to the, like, not, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to put an end to this whole spy raid and bring you back to the village. Anyway, Itachi would say, not yet. Please. Not yet. I'm so close to destroying the Akatsuki and so close to accomplishing my goals of spying. I suspect that Donzo has a lot of malicious intent and Naruto would go in and stop him and saying, 
I already know about Danzo. I already know how evil and how much he wants the position of Hokage. You need not tell me nothing, for I know he's the one who took your best friend's eye. I know he's the main reason why the Uchiha got slaughtered. He's the main reason why my friends, why my friend is so bent on hatred towards you. And Atachi would go on to say, you're talking about Sasuke. And Sasuke would appear right behind like Atachi and saying, Atachi! And he would have a Shidori ready. Like a Shidori ready. And he would charge at Atachi. And Atachi would basically push Sasuke's hand to the like, right and slam him against the wall and telling Sasuke that you're not strong enough and putting Sasuke in a Sukuyomi and knocking him out. This is where Itachi would turn his focus back to Naruto and Naruto would say, why did you do that? Why wouldn't you tell your brother the truth? Not yet. Not yet, Naruto. I'm a, I'll, I'll tell him when he's ready. But as far as right now, I'm not done with my mission. Kisame would come out of nowhere and he would go on to say, Atachi, why haven't you attacked this brat yet? And Naruto and Itachi would go on to agree to basically battle it out and make this look as real as possible. So Naruto and Itachi and Kisame would go on to battle and this is where Jiraiya would show up, basically coming like basically putting the battle to a close, doing his toad mouth summoning, and Jiraiya and Kis no, Kisame and Jiraiya, but not Kisame and Itachi would basically escape. Because, okay, now let's say this. Kisame and Naruto was getting into a battle while Samehara was stealing Chakra. It has no touch on what it can do with Ki. Kisame would be heavily battle damaged because he was hit by one of Naruto's new attacks. Naruto would go on to say as he was beating Kisame by using eye glares, multiple punches, or just speeding around Kisame with his raw speed and strength. And he would go on to tell Kisame, this is a new attack that I have mastered. He would go to infuse Chakra and Ki together and blast Kisame with a big bang Rasengan. And Kisame would be flying back with Jiraiya coming in doing his toad mouth summoning and putting the mouth all over the room and basically Tachi and Kisame had to escape and retreat. They would call the Jonin of the Leaf Edges to come get Sasuke and take him back to the village while Jiraiya and Naruto would continue their journey to go get Tsunade. Now, back to the canon where I left off at. Time skip. So, we're at the point where they're asking Tsunade to come back to the village. And Tsunade would turn it down saying, basically talking smack against the Hokage. And this is what would make Naruto angry knowing the, what the Hokage had to sacrifice for the village. Naruto would be looking at Tsunade with nothing like with anger in a serious face. Who are you to talk bad about their names? The first, second, third, fourth Hokage. Who are you to say those things about them? as they've done nothing but protect and sacrifice for the village. What have you done but drink yourself into the grave all because you're mourning the death of your lover and, I guess mean, like best friend or child friend or something like that or brother or something like that that she was mourning. And this is where Tsunade would be taken aback for this. Like, how does this kid know about my past? And Naruto would basically do it to stand up on the desk and look down at Tsunade and say this, Tsunade, what have you done in the past few years to make you say something like this? Are you timid? Are you scared of battle because you're thinking you might lose someone close to you again? What is it? And Tsunade would be saying, it's none of your business, brat. And Naruto would go on to make a bet. Hmm. I got something for you then. You're a lady of fortune, right? You're a lady of bets. So, I have a proposition for you. If I manage to beat you in a scuffle, if I manage to beat you in a battle, then will you come back to the village and become Hokage? Will you see things my way? And Tsunade would say, Kid, if you can manage to beat me in a battle when you're just merely a genie, 
I can take those odds as the favor is stacked my way. And Naruto, and this is where Jiraiya would like tap Tsunade's shoulder and say, Tsunade, this is just not your lucky day as this kid right here, you don't want to fight him. I've seen what he can do. He's bested Orochimaru, took down a tailed beast, and even bested Kakashi Hatake in a one-on-one -on -one sparring fight. I'm sure it was just his introduction to take the bells whole thing, but this kid is something serious. Tsunade would just scoff and tell, just go outside, and she would do the same thing she did in the cannon, basically punching the ground, and Naruto wouldn't be, like, wouldn't flinch or move. Instead, Naruto would rush at Tsunade, sending off a multiple barrage of punches. And Tsunade would try her best to dodge this, but Naruto's punches was too fast as they hit Tsunade and she went flying over the like air to skip rocking across the area. As Naruto would come down and then he would get him and Tsunade would get into a taijutsu battle with Tsunade basically on the defense from Naruto's attacks. Naruto she goes on to say in her head. Uh, this kid's power, it, it, it's so heavy, his punches feel like tons, as Naruto would go on to punch Tsunade back, and this is where Tsunade would get serious, and she would go on to like use her, what, her seal on her head, basically the markings that go on to first face her, and this is where Naruto and Tsunade would get into a more ferocious battle as the damage was even increasing more heavily. And Jiraiya saying, you guys need to calm down. You're probably just destroying the village. And Nar G Jira Tsunade and Naruto would just be duking it out with Tsunade punching Naruto in the stomach and him coughing up blood and being skip rocking back and crashing into a wall. Naruto and Tsunade was saying, how's that kid? She would be barely breathing, and Naruto would just go on to smile. Hmm. You're already bragging and got one lucky hit on me. While you're already panting. Well, you're already tired and basically might have used up most of your chakra, haven't you? And she's saying, I can still fight. I'm not losing this bet. And Naruto would get, like, get off the wall, and he would land on the ground, and he would look up at Tsunade. And this is where Naruto would say, it's time for me to get serious. He would unleash his ki, this purplish black aura just radiating through Naruto as Naruto was powering up. And he's saying, since you're going all out, I think I should go to 50%. And this aura, this aura would emanate over Naruto's body as Naruto blew off his orange, well, the jacket that he had. Not orange jacket, I said it was something similar to the Boruto outfit. I would say he blew off his shirt shirt and nothing but a white a white shirt was showing naruto would be looking at tsunade with pure anger in his eyes saying i'm gonna make you see reason tsunade and he would go on to unleash hellfire fists at tsunade but tsunade couldn't even block any of these attacks like they were coming too fast at her for one thing it looked like fire but it was just too much for tsunade to handle as tsunade he stopped that attack and he said you will not be able to touch me or land an attack as similar to how byakuya was dancing around ichigo when he was in his dome when he was in that sword dome, he was dancing around Ichigo, Ichigo, basically making it look like he was faster than Ichigo. Something similar to that. I don't know if you guys seen Bleach, but I'm just saying he was basically body flickering around Sh Tsunade. So Tsunade couldn't even land a hit on Naruto, let alone a punch. It wasn't working like at all. Tsunade was getting frustrated as Naruto said, it's over. And neck chopped Tsunade to the head, like neck and she went tumbling like she basically went unconscious. Naruto would be in a meditating position as he was helping like he would said sorry to the villagers that was there with the townspeople and he was helping rebuild and stuff like that. And he had basically learned rebuilding chakra style jutsus as the, re the rebuild process was intentionally faster, way faster with Naruto's help as he could... Mm, well, he could levitate objects off the ground and stuff like that. So it was basically faster. And I'm going to say like key manipulation. Like he wrapped his key around an object and made it float. That's all he did. Anyway, 
So as Tsunade waked up and she healed herself from her injuries, Naruto extended a, Naruto looked down at her and saying, I'm not saying he extended a hand because that's way too friendly for Naruto's personality. I'm gonna say Naruto looked at her and say, do you see? And she would go on to say, yeah, kid, you're no joke. You won this battle. I'll return to the village and become Hokage. And Naruto would go on to say, Tsunade, there's something I want to test. Naruto would pull out a kunai and cut his hand and throw blood in Tsunade's face. And Tsunade would just freeze up. She would be scared and stuff like that. And Naruto would go on. The wound would heal with Kuruma's chakra. We all know that. So Naruto would go on to say and say to Jiraiya, you want her to become Hokage while she has this blood thing about her. Naruto would kneel down to Tsunade and lift her head and saying, you have nothing to be afraid of. The people, the lover, your friend, who fought for their ideals, they died in battle. They were warriors to the pure end. You shouldn't be scared of blood. You shouldn't be scared of the feet of battle. While I know you, the battle or the wars or the encounters you've been in can have some post-traumatic stress. Believe in me, Tsunade, that your lover, your friends. This is where Naruto would gain that mobility to become Hokage, to become the Hokage of justice. So Naruto would be looking at Tsunade and he's saying, you need not to worry because their will lives inside of me. I will become the next Hokage. Not the next Hokage, I will become the Hokage of the Leaf Village. And Tsunade would look at Naruto as he's saying, I'm sorry for throwing blood in your face, as it might have been a cruel thing, but I sense weakness in your heart, fear. Allow me to take away that fear. And the whole battle with Orochimaru Kabuto, that would change a little slightly. Um, no, that would change a lot. <laughs> Let's say that would change a lot. Orochimaru still has possessive of his own. Wait. My bad, I fucked up. Anyway, that battle would not happen at all because Orochimaru doesn't need to talk to Tsunade because his arms is not sealed away. She doesn't need to talk to he doesn't need to talk to Tsunade. So that whole battle thing does not happen at all. My bad if I misled you. It does not happen at all. Anyway, so Tsunade would come back to the village, become the fifth Hokage. She would heal Kakashi and she would heal Sasuke. And Sasuke would look at Naruto with pure anger in his eyes, like. If you thought Sasuke wanted to fight Naruto in the original canon, he wants to fight Naruto even more. And Naruto looks at Sasuke and saying, what, you have a problem with me or something? And this is where Naruto, would, Sasuke would say, Naruto, fight me. And Naruto would go on to say, no. Indeed, Sasuke, I do admire your power and your strength and everything, but you're no match for me. The battle would be over in mere seconds. And this is where Sasuke would say, fight me now, Naruto. And Naruto says in his head, he's not going to listen to words. He has to be proven with actions. So Naruto and Sasuke would go on to the roof. And this is where Naruto and Sasuke would get into their little battle. Just you, With Naruto basically having the upper hand in Taijutsu. Sasuke would be trying his best to battle against Naruto, but be get just sent back to the ground with Sasuke getting desperate, sending out a fireball jutsu, and basically Naruto just dispelling or nullifying the attack, counseled out the whole fireball jutsu. And Sasuke would basically be in air and just get more angry and then charge a Shindori in his hand and saying, Naruto! And this is where Naruto would truly see that Yes, Sasuke, you really are like me. You seek strength. You want power. I can give you power. I can give you strength. All you have to do is train in the arts of ki. And Sasuke would be float running down at Naruto. And Naruto would be trying to like, get into a familiar stance. And he would go on to say, Ka May. And the blast would be getting bigger. This purplish beam would be charging in Naruto's hand. Ka May. And Sakura would go on to run and saying, Stop, you two, stop! And she would be running out of him. And Naruto would say, What is she doing? 
and she would be running with Sasuke basically running down there and not they say ah, ah, I can't stop the attack why is she getting in the way and this is where Naruto would counsel out his Kamehameha grab Sasuke Shindori slamming Sasuke to the ground and pushing Sakura down and then this is where he would look at Sakura are you an idiot or something do you have a death wish Sakura would say no I I just wanted you two to stop fighting so you wanted us to stop fighting by running in the middle of a a death beam and an electrical blast. Well, electrical shouldn't. Well, you wanted to. You wanted us to stop fighting by running in between a Shindori and a Kamehameha. And Sakura saying, "You could have been killed, Sakura." And she would bow, like let down her head and sigh, saying, "I, I, I, I don't talk. I thought you got stronger." I thought you had power or something like that. You have done nothing but prove me wrong. As your idiotic mind almost got you killed. Naruto would say, weakling. And this would be taken aback by Sakura, making tears in her eyes. And Naruto would turn his focus to Sasuke and saying, Sasuke, if it's power you seek, if it's strength you seek, if, it's, if you want to become stronger, let me train you in the arts of Ki. Use all that anger, all that hatred to master Ki. This is where Sasuke would be like, Master Ki. You're, if, you, if you want to train in the arts of Ki, meet me tomorrow at this specific time. And you will have power to take down your enemies. And take down that so-called brother of yours and naruto would and sasuke would raise an eyebrow saying you know about itachi and naruto would go on to say yes i know you see me there with him when you were talking and sasuke would go on to remember yeah i remember i seen you there you and him talking it's a lot you don't know sasuke but i can't tell you anything and Sasuke would go and say, why? Patience. The, all your answers will soon be answered. Well, all your questions will soon be answered. And just like that, this is where Kakashi would come in and say, what are you two doing up here? Why are you fighting? And Naruto and Sasuke would go, well, Naruto, Sasuke would just flip over the edge and just say, Tss. and Naruto would look at Kakashi and say, well, I guess he's in a dispute or he wants just to, wants to become stronger. And this is where Kakashi would go on to talk to Naruto and everyone would leave the rooftop with Sakura basically running. Well, with Naruto, he left too. And Sakura would go to Kakashi saying, Kakashi, say, am I really weak? And he would go on to say, no, Sakura, you're not weak. You're actually a, a strong Konichi, Konoichi. You just need some improvements. Everyone can get stronger through training. And Sakura will be taken like taking to this and saying, "What? Oh, oh, okay." And she walks away and saying, "Naruto must have said something to her that got her all this, gets her all this upset." So now. Kakashi and, Kakashi and Sasuke have their little talk, but Sasuke doesn't think anything of it, and the four sound ninja come and attack Sasuke. Now, they attack Sasuke, and the Sasuke, he says, I have another way to obtain power, but Orochimaru wants your body, so they take Sa well, they managed to, like, kidnap Sasuke because he was weaker than them because Sasuke wouldn't go with them by force. I mean, well, he wouldn't go with them, and they basically kidnapped Sasuke, so... Nobody knew about this, and they would come with the whole retrieval arc thing, with Tsunade saying the whole retrieval arc to go get Sasuke. So now you have the same team as you did in canon with Sasuke, well not Sasuke, with Naruto, Neji, Kiba, and Choji, and Shikamaru. Now all of them set out to basically go chase after Sasuke and get him back. So the first person they ran into was Jirobu, with Jirobu basically encasing him in a dome. 
So Naruto would go on to say, hmm, you really think this can stop me? Naruto would go on to put like, extend his fist back and punch the dome, basically shattering the rocks around it. Not giving the team, well, the team that was there any time to escape. Naruto would go on to Taijutsu battle, but Taijutsu battle with Jirobo. While the other, while the teammates were getting away, Choji would say, Naruto, Naruto. And he would be stopping, you know, he'd be stopping with Jorobo basically in Curse Mark Stage 2 or Stage 1. And he would look at Choji and say, let me take this one. You just go after Sasuke and the rest of the team. Hm. Well, don't die. This guy is indeed strong. So Naruto, Shikamaru, Kiba, and Neji would fl- go off to their next target. With them running into the next battle with the spider-like dude, I don't know his name. I can somebody tell me his name in the comments so I can stop saying that. But I th- feel like after this part, I won't even need to know his name anymore. But if somebody would tell me his name so I can know it in future videos, then I would highly, highly like you. Anyway, so Naruto and ne- well Neji would take the spider-like dude, and Naruto would say. So then they would go continue on Kiba, Kiba, and would take Sakan and Ukan, and Shikamaru would take Taiyuya, and this is where Kimimaru, I think that's his name, Kimimaru would come in, and Naruto would have to face against Kimimaru. Naruto in this dispute would easily, well, not easily, he would he would use his shadow clones, but at this time Naruto would only summon like five shadow clones, and all five of those shadow clones would be beating the living shit out of Kimimaru. Kimimaru was keeping up with his bones, even pulled out his little bone sword, but Naruto shattered that bone sword, saying, "Hmm, I thought it was strong as steel." This would keep Kimimaru's eyes wide open, and Kimimaru would go into a stage one curse mark form, as. Kimimaru will begin to pull out his spine like whatever that kind of uh, well, weapon was. And him and Kimimaru would begin battling, but Naruto still has the upper hand. And this is pushing Kimimaru back. Kimimaru is getting angry. He's getting very angry. How is this kid besting him? How is he besting me at battle? And Naruto would go on to say, it's because you're weak. You're not strong enough to fight pure strength. You should kneel before justice. As Naruto was emitting his aura and punching Kimimaru left and right in the stomach, slamming him to the ground, Kimimaru would get heavily angry and unleash his curse mark stage three. Well, not stage two. And this is where Gara would come in and Gara would say, Hmm, Naruto, do you need my help? And he'd say, Oh, so they so now they called the sand in to help us with this mission. I don't think I need help with this guy. As Sasuke's just right there. As Kimimaro saying, What you think I'm a joke? And Kimimaro just slams his hands on the ground. Basically, he Naruto grabbed the container that Sasuke was in and Gara and jumped up in the air and floated. And you're saying, Whoa, this guy tended to kill us with that one attack. This is where Rock Lee would come in. Well, Rock Lee would be staying back as he's seen the attack that just happened. And Naruto would just stick his hand in the air and sing Rasen Big Bang Attack. But this time, Naruto enlarged the attacks, enlarged the attack to the scale of a mini spirit bomb, put it that way. And he threw it, let's say, not a mini, mini spirit bomb, but say, bigger than like let's say it's in the middle between a big spirit bomb and a big bang attack so it's that big imagine that so he threw it at the gown where kimimaru was and evaporated while turning the land basically you know how the land that area was tree well a grassy area now it's just the same area as when eight tails and naruto when eight tails did that attack and got a red got rid of all those trees yeah, this is the area that, that's how it looks now. So Naruto just floats down and seeing a beaten Kimimaru and Gara with Gara and Sasuke. Sasuke erupts from the thing and eventually sees the power that Orochimaru can give him, but he doesn't want it. He doesn't need it as he senses Naruto's strength. He knows how strong Naruto is and he's saying, hmm, you guys came to save me. And... This curse mark, stage two thing, 
and indeed is strong, but I I still want to learn that key. I still want to learn how you manage to have your power in key, Naruto. And saying, very well. I thought you were going to get corrupted with that power, but seeming, seeming as you didn't, I'm happy about that. He walks, Naruto walks over to Kimimaro and saying, rest well, warrior. As Kimimaro just dies off without saying anything, he just looks and says, well, he says in his head, who are you? And that's it. As the Sasuke retrieval arc came to a completion and Sasuke was brought back to the village, but he obtained the new powers. Now Sasuke has his stage two curse mark. So that happens. Anyway, so Sasuke would go on his journey with Kakashi very, very early as to basically get a control over the curse mark as Kakashi wanted to get rid of the curse mark on Sasuke, but Sasuke just basically told him he could use it for more training purposes or the, ide the ideals to get stronger in the near future. So Kakashi would just leave it as it is. Naruto indeed would go to training. Well, let's say it like this. He would go training with Kakashi, but Naruto would tell Sasuke about the basic elements of Ki. He would give Sasuke a control of Ki before Sasuke would go on his training, yearly training with Kakashi. He would be training with Naruto. Sasuke would be mastering his Ki control because Sasuke, I don't see why not. He was a prodigy. I mean, not a prodigy. I wouldn't say he's a prodigy, but his Sharingan abilities cap would explain all that. And this part in the timeline, Sasuke is a, like his state, Curse Mark Stage 2 pushed his eyes to evolve to the three third Tomoe Sharingan. So Sasuke would be sitting there mastering Ki and saying, and Naruto, to Naruto's surprise, he's actually getting stronger. And so Naruto would tell him how to f like fly and stuff like that. And this is when Naruto's saying, well, that's basically all I can teach you. Now it's up to you to manifest your own attacks out of this Ki. Manifest your own powers out of Ki. And this is where Sasuke would say, Naruto, you are indeed a true friend. You saved me from the brink of hatred. You saved me from going down a dark path. <laughs> and Sa Sasuke would let off the smile. You must have had your eye on me since the first day we met in the academy. And this is where Naruto say, yeah, you piqued my interest even back then. So Naruto would ask Jiraiya if he could go on to train with him for the few years. And this would shock Jiraiya saying, wow, kid, you want to train with me for two years? And he would say, well, I want to explore. I, I just want to go out. I don't really think I need to train, but I need to do something. And this is where Naruto said, do you really want to leave? And saying, well, since Sasuke is going on a two-year, well, a three-year training mission with Kakashi, I think I do need to get out of the village and go train. So this is where Naruto would pack his bags and Jiraiya would pack his too. So Jiraiya, because Jiraiya wasn't keen on learning this new key-based attacks to basically advance his arsenal of attacks. And Naruto would go on to say, Jiraiya Sensei. I noticed something about you from studying way back then. Your sage mode is incomplete, isn't it? And Jiraiya would say, how did you know that? Knowledge. I think this two year time skip, we should be focused on getting you stronger, getting you more keen to your powers and stuff like that, as future battles could potentially leave you dead. So Jiraiya would take note to this and the three year time skip would begin. Now, do you guys want me to do a Shippuden part to this part? So, cause I can go into Shippuden, I can go into the details of Shippuden and all that kind of stuff. So without any further ado, this, this series is really coming to an end. I'm glad you guys like it. So I basically put all the parts, instead of just doing basically going part from part and all that kind of stuff, I basically just wrapped up the whole end of the base Naruto series. So basically, if you guys want to see the Shippuden part, 90, not 90 likes. If you get past that, I will put it out as soon as possible. Anyways, without any further ado, you guys have a good day, a good night, and plus ultra. Good night, guys.